Just in case you didn't need that. I needed that, yeah. <laughs> Just in case you might not know, that's Barry. Yeah. This is Robin. This is Morris. And this is Andy. <laughs> Robert Stigwood. Because you just blew a contract with him. Are you better? Yes, much better. Thank yes, you. Because you were. Sorry, I missed it. The last boys time. were here about six months ago, and you were ill. Yes, I had uh, a very bad galloping case. flu. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was worse than that. I didn't even know that. I'm so sorry. No, the Los Angeles bug, I think it was called at the time. Was that? <laughs> yes, yes that was going around. When? Hello. Hello. Hi. 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 <laughs> Right. Uh, All right. Okay. Wonderful. Bye. No, 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 no. no we haven't. I'm glad to see you all again. Yeah, it's good. Well, you haven't seen me before, but no, no, no. Nice to no. see you guys well, back on the show. <laughs> How have you stood this for 11 years? Do they ever have a serious conversation with you, Mr. Stigwood? Uh, now and again, oh, but uh, after uh, 11 years, uh, Merv, I'm, I've decided it's all become too much, and I'm taking a two-month vacation <laughs> to recover. You're taking a two-month vacation? That's right. Aren't you going to wait right. to see if the Profits are yeah, rolling really invited in? us all to go uh, in. No, no, they're having a two-day vacation. I'm having two months. Mm. <laughs> we bought Bermuda for him, so we go for a holiday. <laughs> Do you think he <laughs> saved his money over the years? I don't know. It's hard to say, though. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know when he's coming or going. Huh? Between yeah. you and me, Mo, I'm sure he's got a lot piled away. Do you think so? <laughs> but he keeps it out on that little island out yeah. there called Bermuda. Yeah, well, he's got a huge money bin. Oh, right, is he? Know, like, you know, like Scrooge McDuck. Uncle you know? Scrooge. He's got it? And he's got a worry room where he just walks around. How would that be furnished? Very badly. Really? <laughs> I deny all this. I live in Bermuda. I am an American taxpayer. Uh, <laughs> an American taxpayer in Bermuda? <laughs> Mm. God, people will believe anything. <laughs> <laughs> when you have to have meetings, does he, does he call you out there? I mean, you have to no, roar we, up. We call him, any. <gasps> no, yeah, no, no, actually, we, do, we, we, we sometimes oh, go on holiday out there with, and spend it with uh, yeah, with it was pretty old Bobby. Yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful <laughs> island. It is. Yeah. yeah it is. When you can find it, yes. Yeah. I think it's a little left, left of... I think the first time I... It's left I, of New York City, the, I remember. That's right. You, that's you, you, you leave JFK Airport and you get up there and then you turn left. No, right. Mm. Keep going, a straight line. <laughs> and then it's there. Well, the first time we went there, yeah. I remember we were, the, the captain said, well, we're, we're landing now into Bermuda. I'd never been there before. And I looked down and I saw this little thin strip of island. I thought, ah, oh, that must be one of the islands off the coast of Bermuda, you know. <laughs> it, that was Bermuda. That was Bermuda, yeah. I didn't know where the hell we were going to land. <laughs> but the captain found somewhere. Cute little houses, pink and blue. This oh. is white. Oh, do you have a little white house? Yes. And a little pink. Or a great little big little. white house. <laughs> yeah. I have a medium-sized white house. It is interesting with all of your like success. Where, where all of you have settled. I mean, you chose... <laughs> I, would, I would have handed that. Do you want your own? No, 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 no. We're just not mucky people, you know. We don't have to And will you clean up when you leave? Sure. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, it's interesting where you all picked to settle. I mean, you, the, you two settled in Florida. You, you're still with the mother country. Oh, you're with the mother country. Yeah. Do you want well, to Robin. Yeah. Uh, Would you like to sit here? Taxis, I'm, I'm, not, I'm out for a year, actually. Out of Florida? I can't go back. Well, he's staying in bed for a year. He's out of his mind. He's out of his mind. I'm out of the country for a year. Do you all remember no. your first meeting? Yes. It's a story similar to Sandy's, isn't it? Uh, Somebody sent well, you a tape of these boys from Australia? Yes, they did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Under another name? No. Or? Well, <laughs> and uh, I heard it, and uh, I, I was absolutely astounded. It was Nothing the most brilliant sure. harmony singing and composing <laughs> I'd ever heard. Do you remember the first song you heard them sing, Mr. Stigwood? Uh, yes, it was a song called Jingle Jangle. Oh, my God. Um, I've got the bells that jingle jangle <laughs> jingle. Oh, no, 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 no. Robin, no, no, could you no. sing it? <laughs> Come on, don't sing it. No, I'm sure I'll sing a few bars for you. It was the most wonderful harmony singing and composing I'd heard. And uh, I, uh, they were on a boat at the time travelling from Australia to England. And I was frantically trying to find them. And I think 48 we hours. Arabia. <laughs> we had a good time. 48 hours after they arrived in London, I tracked them down and... Uh, did you make them audition for you live? Uh, uh, I'm afraid I in. did. He came in at uh, the Savile Theatre, which is a pulled oh, down now. Yeah. <laughs> What's it? <laughs> he Savile. came in aided by two men, <laughs> holding each arm. Good heaven. He had a hangover like you wouldn't believe. Oh. He sat down in front of us... Don't worry, Rob, this is 11 years ago. ...put his head like this, you know, and said, carry on. So we did what we 
had worked up, which uh, in Australia we had a nightclub act, and our act was a medley of Peter, Paul and Mary songs, oh, with, ending with Morris kissing Robin. This was a long time ago, Phil. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> great. You couldn't do it now, you wouldn't down. get away with it. But, uh, he yes. never saw a minute of it. He heard something and said, uh, come and see me in my office later on, then staggered out again. But we later discovered that he didn't have a hangover at all. <laughs> he just couldn't stand what he was hearing. <laughs> <laughs> rebuttal, rebuttal. I, I he absolutely felt so sorry rebuttal. He felt so sorry the for it. Hangover is slightly up. true. Hangover, uh, uh, wasn't it? You look like death warmed up. <laughs> oh, blimey. And every high note was a pain? Uh, no, <laughs> it was a joy, but I couldn't express it you because I was in a little it. agony. However, it looks uh, kill, in, the, ne in the next 24 hours, We'd all made a contract together for me to uh, manage and record. And uh, no, those David sign anything. And that was uh, a, a really Eleven. great. Yeah. Relationships don't last that long in this business. No, no we quit. Well, well, they... Did you quit? <laughs> yeah. Good, much. They do at RSO because we try yes. to be a family, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a, an integral way for us to work. It's very, very important. You are a bit of a mystery man, though, uh, Mr. Oh, Stevens. he's a shadow. Is he a shadow? No, a shadow. Oh, 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 oh. Is he? He's the new Howard Hughes, is yeah. he? Oh, oh, I'm not a mystery. So. He's not new. He's not new, Howard. I said middle. Uh, is he? New. What is it that you have, that you have this incredible ability to pick songs, to pick groups, to pick movies, to make you everything know. a success? Do you have a great musical Thank ear? You know. No, I'm tone deaf, but I think... Oh. Uh, not the key. It's a terrible time to admit it. <laughs> <you tell us. laughs> I think uh, the lucky thing is I'm, I'm one of the most fortunate people in the world because uh, very few people have uh, oh, the opportunity that I have, and that is my work is my hobby. Mm. And uh, God bless me for being able to do that and because not many people are that fortunate. Now, is it true you merely picked up a phone and said, for Saturday Night Fever, I want you guys to write me five songs, and they knew nothing about what they were writing? That just, they wrote... You first no, I, to I told them uh, the, the synopsis of the story from the uh, magazine article, which was the inspiration for the film. I did say to them, this is when they draw a, a very big, deep breath, when I said, I need them next week. Told you so. And uh, they, wrote, they, they actually wrote the original score in uh, one week. And, and had it ready for me. Absolutely. We'll be right back with Robert Stigler and the Bee Gees after this message. Uh, Frankie, uh, as a as a spokesman kind of today, as a great performer who's faced audiences night and day. Well, don't make it. Well, you make it sound like an audience. I mean that appeals to that audience. Talent. Is it? Yes, I oh, have great talent. Francis. No, it's true. Uh, I wish um, I went... Well, we did a, with this special a long time ago, wasn't it? It was called Frankie Howe Meets the Bee Gees. And uh, <laughs> I didn't know what to expect because they were very big success and I, I'd been running around a long time. So I was in awe of them and I wondered how they would behave. And, uh, you, didn't, you didn't know us from Adam. You... I did. I did know you from Adam. You'd made records. Yes, I did. Don't interrupt your elders. Oh. And, <laughs> Sorry, Francis. Uh, that's all right. And uh, I was a bit in awe of them. I wondered how they're going to behave. And I thought, oh, you know, I thought they'd be under... See, I, see I, if I may just say this, I was also very much connected with the Beatles. I knew the Beatles very well. Oh. And, um... Thank you. <laughs> 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 They, they were younger than me as well, anyway, the thing was that uh, I, uh, I, uh, may I just tell you a story? Sure. About this, I'd come back to the boys if I may. The island. And um, one night, the phone, they the, the thought three boys would now do it and she loves me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was big and they came to the, wanted to see me on the, in the show. So I, we had a, a, a manager who ran this club, it was about 190 and never heard of anybody, nothing whatsoever. And I went to him, I said, I said I, the Beatles are in tonight. And he was furious. He said, this place, he said, is sprayed out every day with detergent. <laughs> so I said, no, no. I said, look, I'll, I said, I'll go out. But when I first met the, the Beatles, they were very irreverent. They were very, what they might call anti-establishment. They were, they were very outrageous. And, um, these would be, but I expected something similar. Well, now, I found Barry and, and uh, Morris, Robin, quite different. They were very anxious to learn. They were very anxious to be professional. And we did sketches together, and which, as you know, because you know comedy and you need timing. And they were very eager to be, to be helped. 
and they weren't at all cocky, and I was very, very impressed. And I thought, now these boys really have something more than just an ability to perform, to sing. And uh, they, they have a comedic talent. They have a, a very good sense of comedy, yeah. which really... Now, I'll come to the tagline of this long story. Yes. <laughs> I'm now trying to talk Robert Stigwood into making a film with me and them where they can be funny as well as me. Do you understand the point? Oh, yeah. So I'm trying to sell a package to him on your show tonight. Ah, and then. That's what I'm being used for. That's right. I don't think I'll ever ask him another question. <laughs> Boy, would you look at the time? Yeah, that took, that took an hour there. I know I was. Do you remember very well done, though. Thank you, Frank. Did you know Thank you. the Beatles? Oh, no, no we, 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 do, we haven't met about three of them, I think. Morris used to live next door to Ringo. Well, we used um, to share the same bed. We met Paul. The same what? And <laughs> Nothing, I just thought I'd draw you down. We met Paul and we met John, who... I met John at, at one point in the speakeasy in England about 1967 during the flower power days where he shook hands with me with his back to me. He never met me. Mm. What well, he did, he did in a way, he shook hands with me, but he never turned around to see who he was shaking hands it with. It like a very strange handshake. Mm. It was a very strange handshake, and I'll never forget it. You've never been the same. <laughs> Are you great admirers over the, over the of years course. of the... Of course. I mean, who isn't? Right. Mm. Everybody loves what they did, and, uh, and I'm sure everyone would love them again. If they we'll come right back to the beach. You're constantly improving your music. Have you recorded yet the music that you want to be remembered? Well, well we believe we're on our way to recording the music that uh, we'd like to be remembered by. Because even the early BG music is still with us and recorded all the time. It's, it's, it's how do you mend a broken heart? It's a shock to us. It's, a, it's unbelievable that mm -hmm. the music we wrote 11 years ago, people still want to hear today. Totally unbelievable. Did you, did you realize that you were going to be such a, no. a disco Well, we always hit? had an inkling that if we kept doing what we were doing long enough, somebody might listen and something special might happen to us. We always had that feeling, but that's as far as it went. I mean, day by day, that's all it was. And, uh, you realize, of course, that your music has filled the discos of this country and of, and of Europe, too, oh, with sorry. customers. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. We really have to thank Robert for it's that. It's completely unintentional. I, I watched one night at uh, Paul Anka's discotheque in uh, Las Vegas, which is beautiful, called Jubilation. Yeah. And they would play certain um, disco songs, and the audience would kind of get up and dance. But the minute one of your records hit, it was like the whole crowd moved to that floor. Well, I heard. <laughs> You never, you, you react before I finish the sentence, to dance. No, I know the end oh, of the guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, you have to really um, thank Robert Stigwood for that. Mm. Because it just, the movie itself. <laughs> Yvonne Elliman was on the show recently and told a story about you. She said that she was supposed to record How Deep Is Your Love, and you took that away from her and gave it to the Bee Gees. That's right. Well, you, no, he, uh, he gave really it to us. He said, he said, well, you wrote it for it her. Really, it what didn't really no, involve Yvonne. What, happened, that. It what was happened was we wrote How Deep Is Your Love along with all the other music that we've been asked to write for the, uh, in the film. And it was, it was apparently, Yvonne was looking for a song at that particular we time. Right. And yeah. her husband happened to have been over at the time, Bill Oaks, who'd said at the time, Hey, listen, where's Bill? <laughs> anyway, he, he heard the song, and what happened was he said to us that she had an album out at that particular time, which her producer wanted to release another track off that album uh, to keep that album going rather than come, off, come with a brand new song. So we did it ourselves. But mm -hmm. Robert, said, uh, Robert also said at the time, um, you've got to do this song yourself. Oh, yeah. It belongs to you. You shouldn't give it away to anybody. Right. So, you know. I felt very strongly about that because when I heard the Bee Gees perform it themselves, it, it was the, one of the most moving ballads I've ever heard. Sure. And I thought it was only. Yeah. Let me, if I may, show another clip from Sergeant Pepper. This is a clip with uh, the Bee Gees, with Peter Frampton, and uh, our wonderful George Burns. Uh, it's a big production number, Mr. Kite. Here is that clip from Sergeant Pepper. Watch. For the benefit of Mr. Kite, there will be a show to Pablo be there. Later, Pablo, Frank is there. What a scene of a man and horses, hoops and garters, lastly through a hog's head of real fire. In his way, Mr. K will challenge the world. <laughs> Wonderful clip from Sergeant Pepper. Great energy, color, spirit. 
Excellent. We'll be right back after this message. That's it. Let's not work together. We all, uh... Oh, no, we never ever said that. We just said, let's quit. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all quit together, that. right? We all stayed we did, in bed yeah. for a year as a tax dodge. No. <laughs> we, all, we did split in 1970 and... Uh, 1960, very late 1969, and came back together again about the end of 1970. So it was useless, got one split again at 971. You really don't want to be labelled disco no. No, no, at all, no, no, do you? Because, we, because our music is a variety of different kinds of music. It right. shouldn't be called just that. There's it's nothing really wrong with the word. Glenn Miller was a disco band, if that's what you want to call disco. Right. He was a dance band, and uh, ever since people have danced, there's been disco, if that's what you really want to say the word is. But uh, we, we think there's a lot of things that we do, a lot of different things. And, I mean, I, I, How Deep Is Your Love, which is from the film yeah. Saturday Night Fever, wasn't a disco song at all. Mm -hmm. It's just a love ballad. Merv, I've had the rare and unique privilege of hearing some of the... Some of the... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Some of the new tracks they're cutting at the moment. Have you heard them? I've heard most of the new album in production in Miami, and I think they're going to surprise the world. Uh, and I'll, I'll make a bet with you now, there's a song called Too Much Heaven that is probably one of the most beautiful songs the Bee Gees have ever written. Mm. It is magnificent. Thank you, Robert. Tell us yeah, how. You know how much that us? <laughs> <laughs> Too Much Heaven. <laughs> I've got a yeah, bet on with it. Uh, okay. uh, how do you write? Do you all sit down and say... We sit down and, 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 and first of all, we construct what we think is, a, is a, as a melody. We take it up where we think it should go up, and we take it down where we think it should go down into the verse, after the chorus, whatever that may be. We find out the whole area with just melody, and then we start to find... Oops, I'm a dead horse. <laughs> um. And then... Um, what do I know? <laughs> that is Wallet. Whoa! Oh, what was that? I'm not showing you now. No, no. What was that? What is that? It's a badge. Well, I know well, it is. Constable of Farthingham. <laughs> Good yeah, heavens, yeah. you're constable, sir. I'm not constipated at all. No. <laughs> Sergeant Pepper. Ooh, Dade County, Florida. Huh? Is said enough now? Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> It's only hey, on the hurry. He's a copper. It's only on the hurry. <laughs> they gave it to me so I wouldn't get any license tickets and stuff. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, tickets. Get back to when you go to you work. You know how much money it costs, though? Uh, Morris. Sorry. Morris. <laughs> um, then we, sort, we conjure up a title. No, then we start to discuss what the person in the song is, is saying or doing. We can either come up with the title. We never sit down and, and, and on purpose, let, let's write. We never There's do that. many different ways we do it. One of us may have an idea and come to the other two. Was be. your dad and his music the most influential thing in all of your lives? Well, we never heard a lot of Dad's music. He never played a lot of his own music, well, but he did play... It was very difficult. He... <laughs> Our father played us uh, what we still think is one of the best harmony groups of all time, the Mills Brothers. Oh, yeah. And uh, although they may see, it may seem a little dated to, to say that they're one of the best harmonies, they really are. It's a, it's a round, beautiful m harmony that they get. And uh, when we were very young, we listened to them a lot. And we were a natural three-part harmony group, and, and we were influenced by them. And s consequently, other people came along, we were influenced by them as well. But firstly, our father played us a lot of those records. There have been newspaper items saying, Barry, that you were going to produce an album for the Mills Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Did I get something away? <laughs> <laughs> you look at the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, wonderful to have you here. Did I say the magic word? Oh, I can't ask Frankie. <laughs> I knew he didn't want us to last this long. It, it's it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> Was that a translation? <laughs> well, After. Yes, oh, here I am. Sorry. It hasn't even. No, nothing has ever been, has really ever been discussed. What Barry's trying to say is, is he's trying to. It, it, it is a rumor. It's a rumor that he has nothing to do with. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah. But, you, but you do produce Andy's. I co-produce with what Albie and Carl Galut. Just a minute. Just a minute. What's that got to do with the Mills Brothers? Albie and Carl Cal uh, Albie Galutin and Carl Richardson are our co-producers. Uh -huh. uh, we co-produce our own albums with these two guys, and. Uh, Carl and Albie, along with me, produce Sorry. other acts, such as uh, Frankie Valley's Grease and uh, Andy's Material, and all of this stuff. No, no, it's all, it's all true. <laughs> uh, 
and uh, we more or less have two different production teams. When the Bee Gees record, the Bee Gees co-produce with Albie and Carl. And apart from that, I do outside work with Albie and Carl, which is... Uh, How many times has it been suggested that Hundreds of thousands. Well, I haven't said it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. They're, they're, they're starting to bug me, Mr. Orr, so... Uh, um, no, 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 Robert, no, no, not yet. That uh, you do uh, sometime an album with Andy. Yeah, well, yeah, that's in, that's in the distant future, I think. I think Andy is uh, doing so well on his own that I think we should just leave him alone and... Um, He's oh, refusing to work with you so far? No, not at all. <laughs> no, I don't. We, in fact, we, do, we, we just worked together. We did... Uh, he did his live show in Miami, and we went. Hello, mother. <laughs> yeah. She's in riot. Yes. Oh, she's sitting way over there, though. She's yeah. 90 years old, but she's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing with these millions of dollars? She's cute, you know. <laughs> what are you doing with your millions of dollars? No. Oh, no. <laughs> There was, there has been a, a, you had five of the top ten records for a long period of time. Now, I mean, nowadays when you talk about hit records, uh, you're talking about millions and millions of dollars. No, it's awful, isn't it? <laughs> no. All these young people, they can't leave young people making money. Well, I don't, these long, these long haired gits going around earning this money, I don't know. There's no stopping, ah, no ah. stopping. What do you do? What, I mean, what are your luxuries? Soap. Soap, bread, milk, food, <laughs> tea, <laughs> coffee. Help. I have a bath every six months whether I need it or not. You're kidding. He does? You mean the boys turn the hose on you? Or? Right. No, we don't have to help him. No? We have, our, we have what we consider to be our nice homes and our car and our boats. Do you lead exciting lives, Barry? Or, or I don't think so. Lights off at 8 oh, o'clock yeah. every night. Really? We always drive down the road about midnight no, watching no, the no, lights change on the high street. <laughs> Mind you, they're broken at the moment, so it's all our Sundays. <laughs> Barry, I mean, what, for example, it would be an You're exciting right. night for you. He goes down to the he goes down to the traffic lights and see them change. Oh, does he? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Gee, I always, from these stories I read, I thought they were really leading exciting God. lives, Mr. Stigler. Oh, he's got a skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, 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 it's just not that cool, you know. Not, he doesn't go clubbing and all that, but I'll tell you what, though, he, he goes and empties the pool. Does he? He holds it up again every day. <laughs> um, well, this is really terrific. Well, he hasn't got a skateboard rink, so he empties the pool and skates around the pool and then he pulls it back again. <laughs> Yeah. Sweep for the tennis court. <laughs> oh, 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 do we have tennis? It's your turn next week, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Frankie, have you left us? Oh, I'm sorry, oh. I woke you up there. We'll be right back after this Thank message. You. Be careful, don't say anything. To <laughs> you know, Mr. Stigwood, why you choose not to work in this town, Hollywood? I do work in Hollywood. <laughs> no, but I mean, base your well, whole... I refuse to. Base your whole operation here. Well, when I left England and I saw Bermuda, I fell in love with the Can country. It's the most, most beautiful country. The speed limit is 20 miles an hour. And I find after the hectic show business world to be able to return home to Bermuda and relax. Your black window Absol moped. Absolutely suits me. Uh, Why he's looking so exhausted? Because he goes home every night. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> he all, commutes to Bermuda. It's about a 10-hour journey. <laughs> No, I, I, I love Hollywood, but I think I get a better perspective by not living here. Right, right. Uh, which helps me a lot in my work. Is your first love motion pictures, or is your first love the music business? Right. It's, it, it's all mixed. Uh, I, I love music, I love television. I, I think it's nearing 18 million uh, double albums worldwide at the moment. I've got seven in my garage. Seven? <laughs> but I mean, that, that would be... ...was refused uh, by the Academy to be nominated for an Academy Award. Mm. None of us could understand that. I, I was shocked. I still, still am shocked. I think uh, the governors of the music branch of the, the Academy were out of their minds because I don't think there's ever been a more perfect marriage of music Never. and uh, movie together. Right. And... Uh, mm. And I know... I know in the heart and... Uh, of everybody in the world who's a moviegoer, uh, they agree with me, and I think by popular consensus, the Bee Gees won the Academy Award oh, for their music. Far. Without question. And, and of course, and, and the influence of...
motion, more motion pictures? Uh, yes. Uh, when we well, you might regret. <laughs> when, when, <laughs> I've got him right here. Got him. Uh, when when uh, we've all had our vacation, we're going to meet together and uh, plan uh, the next feature film, which will be starring the Bee Gees, and uh, we will be announcing that after the, the vacation, which is long overdue for all of us, I think. You don't want to announce it before your vacation soon? Uh, no, 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 no. It's still, still a little discussion. Nah. <laughs> it's it's looks it's looks it's like money to me. All right, <laughs> <laughs> We'll be right back. Growing up, who's the first to uh, show interest in the music business? Myself. Was it you? I was the eldest. I was the, the eldest. Morris and Robin were like five or six years old when I first got an interest in. My in first interest was Tommy Steele, uh, oh. who was a big British rock actor. How often he um, was on this show. Yeah. Really? He, oh, yes. Oh, he used to be on. I first met him because he used to come and stand in the back of the auditorium. He was across the street uh, in uh, New York from us in, a, in our theatre oh, in a half a sixpence. Yeah. Half a sixpence. So look now, but he's not there. Is he? Uh, uh, is he uh, there? Again. No, no. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, 1955 this, this must have been. I think um, I turned nine, I got a guitar for Christmas, and Robin and Morris, um, within the next six months we were doing three-part harmony, which uh, shocked all, our, all people around us because we were so young, I mean, especially Morris and Robin, I think it was the most surprising thing. And uh, we, would, we didn't, our family didn't really hear, hear what we were doing until about a year or so later when we were in another, in our bedroom, I believe, sitting on the bed and strumming and singing. And this is still about uh, nine and six years old. Mm -hmm. And our grandfather, who would hear us regularly, never mentioned to mum and dad that... Well, he was walking, Kane, didn't he? Yeah. What the hell is going on in here, you say? <laughs> what are you yeah. doing in the toilet? Get out of there. <laughs> we used to go in the toilet. Go the bomb. Get well, out. as kids, funny, funnily enough, we used to go around and we used to look for public conveniences because the reason the for this is because echo. the echo. We yep. used to love singing in the toilets. Or find big staircases which went you have to make a few arrests. <laughs> and your agent couldn't book too many of those. Yeah. Yeah. You used to stand in places that were just echoing, like, you know, sort of big pipes, you know, so stand there and sing. Yeah. No guitars or anything, just you sing. sing the echo corners, sing. Anywhere where there's echo. We would find uh, empty churches and Jail sing cells. Just stand there and start singing, you know, in harmony. Did you know great success in Australia? I've heard the name. We, no, we used to see a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> We used to see a lot of it. We never had any. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yes. the, very last, the very last month that we were leaving Australia, our first single got to number one in Australia, and that was called Spicks and Specks. Right. And, uh, and it did also in Holland and in other strange places that weren't really part of the major music now, industry. If you were Dutch, you'd resent that. <laughs> oh, I might, yes. So <laughs> the next step was to catch a boat out of there. And, uh, well, our next step was to become known internationally if it was humanly possible. We, right. we were ambitious. We sets and of clogs and went to Holland. And, no. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you had to go to Holland. Took us to the Daffodils. We call ourselves the Cloggies. And you can get locked into Australia. Because, I mean, Australia has a great record market of its own. Right. And anyone who has success in Australia doesn't really have very much outside Australia because the links overseas are far too distant. And so our objective away. was to become known in other countries. And, and the best place to do that is in the US or in England. And at that time, the, the British boom was uh, at its fullest, and, and we headed for England. We sent tapes to people like um, Robert and uh, the great organization who told us that it was useless. Oh, they told the great organization told us to take a running jump, didn't they? They told us that... I don't know the exact the words, but... The, what is the great organization? Any, uh, well, the people who handled the Seekers in those days, who were at scene. that time enormous. Quite a big they said, we can get you some club work, but the group scene is out. <laughs> and this is 67, beginning of the guy who said that is sweeping floors now. Is he? <laughs> Yours? No, 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 no. I no, 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 I'm just quoting. <laughs> this is what a leading <laughs> executive in the music industry told us, that groups were out. Mm. And uh, that the only thing that existed now was, uh, I'm talking about 67, was Eric Clapton and uh, Jimi Hendrix and people like that. This, is this was told to us by a person who was very important. From the moment you, um... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Merv. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just a little diamond we have on the show. Like a BG lighter. Oh, a BG lighter. Thank you. Do you have anything else I can have? <laughs> no, 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 no. Anybody like a belt buckle? <laughs> yes, the whole. Uh, from the moment you arrived yes. uh, in Europe, how long did it take before your first great success? About. From the moment that we arrived in England. Mm -hmm. we arrived well, in February, funnily enough, February, funnily enough, no, no, no. It was a good, it's a good question. It's a good funnily question. enough, before mm -hmm. we left, our mother, has, her, her hobby is to uh, read people's uh, futures, read the cards. And collect you surgical know. instruments. Really? <laughs> 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 she, she, she's 90, but she's a lot of fun. And what she, 
But the thing about it is, she used to perform short operations in the home and never tell anybody about them. Oh, yeah. Was this recently? She, was, she could have you rolling in again. Oh, well, she's got rolling in the eye. I had mine surgically removed. <laughs> <laughs> the scalp. What was the question again? The question, and so your mother read something in the cards. She used to read cards. I mean, she doesn't do it so much now, but she used to read the cards. And, and the, the good luck signs in the cards are fives and tens. And a lot of fives and tens came up the, the time she read them. This is before we left Australia. Mm -hmm. And she said that bef before five months or five years or five something, you will have everything you want. She told us this. Our first successful record was, in, was within five months of us arriving in England. Mm. And uh, I don't know if that's really anything to go by, but she was also correct in describing Robert long before we met him. My father gave us a thick ear for big textbook. I won't repeat the description. Do you see any fives and tens around me? I see many fives. <laughs> and I see lots around you and this incredible new motion picture, Sergeant Pepper. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.